Hey guys, it is November 7th, 2011, episode number 6 of my video blog. Today we're going to talk about the Roland R26. It is a portable recorder. I'm using it mostly for sound design purposes, recording sounds in the field, taking them back into Pro Tools, and sometimes Logic, tweaking them around for um, sound effects and stuff. So this week I went ahead and brought home some of my instruments from my Funimation office. I'm having trouble finding room for them all. Uh, I think the walls are about the only place I have left for them. So I went ahead and started throwing them up on there. Uh, doubles as decoration I guess. So now my studio is starting to look like a music store. But uh, what else is going on this week? Uh, I got a bunch of stuff from Amazon. I did like a big Amazon shopping spree and bought a whole whole bunch of junk. The Roland R26 is one of those things I purchased. I also purchased a Magic Mouse. I used to have the Mighty Mouse and I freaking hated that thing. I love-hate relationship. I love that I could do horizontal and vertical scrolling, which is actually really hard to find outside of that mouse. I don't know if it's like patented or what. It would always get gunked up. You would always have to clean it. And it wasn't easy to clean because you had to take the ball out but you weren't supposed to so you had to break the mouse just to get to it. So anyway, I'm finally done with that thing. I got the Magic Mouse um, which is basically, if you don't know, it's just um, it's a normal mouse uh, but it has a trackpad on top so you can do gestures. You can just rub your finger on top and it scrolls. You can um, set it up to different gestures, different finger touches will do, do different commands. If you do have a Magic Mouse and you don't have a better touch tool you should get it or something like it if there's another program like it. When you get the Magic Mouse shipped to you normally, it only has a few functions. It has left, left, right mouse, scroll up and down, scroll left and right, and then one other scroll, um, which you can only attribute to one or two functions. So it's really strangely limited. If you get better touch tool, any command um, and any key combination can be attached to a variety of things like um, a two finger tap or a three finger scroll down or um, a four finger double tap. I mean there's so many combinations that you can you can do. Uh, the only downside is I think the Bluetooth signal from the Mighty Mouse, because it's wireless, uh, might be interfering with my Wi-Fi. Uh, my internet seems to be slowing down, so I'm looking into that right now. Also, I purchased this week uh, a little mini keyboard for here in my ISO booth, which is where I'm at now, if you weren't aware. Um, I actually have it in here to show you. It's this guy, which is pretty sweet. Um, it even has a uh, nifty little uh, laser pointer there. Woo uh, hopefully it's not really bad for my camera to point a laser pointer into it. Basically now I can control um, sessions from within the isolation booth. Before I'd have to have an engineer out there. When I want to record my own stuff, um, now I don't have to have you know, my wife or a friend or someone engineer out there for me. Oh, we got a, a cool, awesome, futuristic baby monitor I'm strangely excited about. It's like one step short of the uh, portal turret guarding my baby. Maybe maybe like two steps short, but it's almost there because you can actually pan and zoom and twist the unit around. So basic, basically you can see the whole, the whole bedroom from the one position. It's pretty fun to, to play around with. Um, bought some books and some other things. I just kind of had a, a fun little Amazon shopping spree. Had some extra cash from a, a gig this month. Speaking of, uh, working on the Tiny Manus gig still. Uh, did some sound design for it this morning and it's coming out good. Looking looking forward to continuing to work on that and eventually having it out for you guys to play. Um, have some other little projects in the woodworks that um, I can't talk about yet but I hope hope they go well and then I can talk about them. But yeah, that's about it for this week. I'm going to go ahead and show you the Roland R26 portable recorder. Uh, this camera kind of sucks, I'm discovering. I actually didn't realize how bad it was until I went to record the footage of the R26. And you can't actually, it won't focus in on any of the text on the unit. Um, and even the screen is hard to read. So I apologize. I already planned on, on doing this before I discovered, so I don't really have time to do something different. So I'm going to record it, talk to you a bit about it. Um, but I, I apologize that you won't be able to see it as well as you should be. But hopefully I can explain it in a way that uh, you can get a good idea of it without actually being able to read everything on it. So uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, check out the R26. I think it's pretty awesome. And have a good week. Okay, so the Roland R26. It's uh, brand new. It actually just came out this week. Uh, I happened to order it the same week it got shipped to Sweetwater and they sent it right off to me. Um, so I just took off the windscreen there. So it did ship with this little windscreen guy which you can just put right over the microphones there if you're recording outdoors or anywhere where um, you might get some wind on, on, on your mics. Um, what's kind of unique about this unit is uh, it actually has four mics on top as opposed to the two standard. So you have your directional XY which you would point at your source. 
Um, and then it also has two Omni mics, um, which are good for picking up sound from any direction. So if you're doing any sort of ambient recording uh, or just trying to get get uh, a not a single point source, those are great for that. And mostly the way this unit works is a combination of those two uh, type of mics. But in addition to those two, you also have the TRS XLR inputs on the bottom. So you can actually have up to four mics that way. And then you can have uh, a fifth there for the, um, it's a little eighth inch um, microphone input as well. Um, so I guess actually that should be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess there's seven inputs total, but they're stereo pairs, so it doesn't quite work out that way. Um, so anyway, so this, another cool feature is that this is actually a touch screen, uh, and it doesn't need conductivity. So if you're wearing gloves because it's uh, cold outside, it'll still work. So that's nice. Uh, you have your volume knobs, your input uh, strength right here. This is for the internal mics, the built-ins, and this is for your analog ends, you know, the three options there. Um, you have the peak light. Um, so when you're peaking, it'll also, of course, show on your screen as well. Um, you have a sense button, which is an interesting little feature they added, which basically you hit that and it detects the volume uh, input level and suggests where you should put your your um, your volume knob at um, so you don't peak. Um, you have previous, next, stop, play, record, menu. Um, pretty straightforward there. On this side you have a flap that covers the USB so you can connect it to a computer for transfer as well as to be an audio interface. Um, so there's your USB and then you have an um, SD memory card slot. That it ships with a 2 gig uh, memory card. So yeah, it ships with that 2 gig card. Um, but of course you could always buy additional cards. Just standard SD. Um, you have a hold to power. You have a DC connection so you can uh, actually plug this guy into the wall which is really nice if you're using it in your studio or somewhere um, so you don't want to waste batteries as quickly you can. There, uh, there is for a strap. On the bottom as I showed you earlier there is the XLR TRS uh, input so you can plug in microphones and any quarter inch uh, jack. On this side you have uh, another spot for a strap. You have a volume knob and headphone input and a speaker if you don't want to hook up headphones to listen back to something. Your quarter inch microphone input, which I personally probably won't ever use, but some people might like that. On the back you have a camcorder uh, or a tripod mount so you can mount this. You have your battery case and I have uh, four double A's in there. And that's about it for the unit physically. The knobs feel nice and tactile. Give you a little click, but they feel really good. Uh, the buttons, I mean, feel really good. Uh, the knobs feel good as well. You can, you know, go in and grab them here, or you can, there's little ridges on this, so you can actually very, just kind of sink your fingernail into those ridges and move it without handling noise. So that's a pretty nice little feature they thought of there. Um, the unit is fairly plasticky feeling, which at first bothered me, but the more I mess with it, uh, the more I forget about it. I think this is all just hardened plastic. Um, the side panels, I believe, are metal, uh, but the rest just is a hardened plastic. The top of the unit, the covers for the mics, I wish they were a little more stout. I mean, I would really have to try to break these, but um, they, I wish they felt uh, heavy duty, but they are plastic as well. Um, but overall it feels good and it's it's not too big um it actually fits in if i put the windscreen back on even with the windscreen i just have a uh, audio technica you know standard little mic bag that you get with most microphones when you buy them um, and actually just it fits right inside Oops. as the windscreen pops off put that windscreen back on i can just slip it right inside See, it just fits right in. So 
so you can use that for protection. It doesn't ship with its own carrying case, um, which kind of sucks, but actually I have a lot of these laying around, so, um, and it feels actually pretty nice and snug in there, so it's not going to bounce around or anything, um, especially with that windscreen as an added buffer for your microphones, which are the truly sensitive part of the unit. Also, you can fit the USB cord in there too. There's enough room, um, the one that it ships with. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a nice little portable container. So, so basically, this is the first screen you see. So if I actually record arm it by hitting this button down here, you'll get a flashing light letting you know it's armed. And actually you'll see a two second um, already in the timeline there. That's because I have a two second pre-record on, so that way if, um, let's say I'm trying to record thunder and uh, I don't want to just leave my recorder running until thunder happens, I can actually um, hit record right after I hear the thunder sound and it'll record two seconds before I hit the button. Um, so it's a nice little feature. Uh, so anyway, so you can see it's already, it's moving to my voice. Um, so I'm, I'm record enabled right now. Those are the meters, that's how they look. Um, if I go ahead and uh, enable more, uh, microphones, it will show all, all the meters. Right now it's just showing, showing to, uh, the, the internal mic it's called, which is actually a combination of the top four microphones. Um, your screen, this initial screen here, you have the info, um, this is a touch screen by the way, so that's, you'll see me navigating by touch. Info tells you like sample rate, things like that. Monitor, you can control the volume, you can turn on and off specific, um, microphones to monitor different ones. Um, the mark screen will let you, I'm um, going to split a recording. So let's say you're recording um, a, a lot of different things um, in one just long take, or if you're recording a, a concert or something, you can just hit split after a song ends and it'll start a brand new track. So that way it's already separated for you. So you don't have to save a little bit of time during your editing. Um, so that's like the three the three main screens that the three main options you have from the initial screen. Um, the sense button down here will bring you one more screen from from the uh, initial startup, and that will give you mic mode, and that gives you some presets between the X, Y, and directional and the Omni. Um, I normally use field. I like the way it sounds. You can do just the X, Y. You can do just the Omni. Uh, you can do your own manual. Um, slider and kind of choose how much you want of each mic um, but generally I find that field preset is actually pretty nice um, and you can actually record right now it's doing uh, a single stereo channel you can record these these four mics as two separate stereo channels um, and then you know then you have in post you have an omni mic and a directional mic to play with um, so really that's it from the initial startup which is nice and simple and clean um, if I wanted to actually record, I'd hit that record button again, by the way. Um, this, this right here is a volume to control um, the, the input volume. Um, the second knob would be if I was using the um, bottom XLR slash TRS inputs. Uh, it controls those. So now, other than the screens I've already shown you, let me go back. So now we're back at the main screen. Um, other than that, there is one more kind of area to show and that is the menu and so I just hit menu right on here and that brought me to this screen and it's a nice little easy you know icon based um, base layout it finder will actually oh it looks like I have no recordings of finder so let's go ahead and record something real quick okay so as you can see I'm running I'm recording all right we'll just go ahead and stop it there now if we go back into menu go into finder now you can see there's a file I recorded um, and from that file, I can do a lot of actions. I can copy it, move it, delete it, rename it. Uh, renaming it's nice, um, so that way you don't get overwhelmed with just kind of meaningless file names. Um, record memo is my favorite because you can actually quickly just record a voice memo that attaches itself to the audio file, and that will um, allow you just quick reference for what it is that you are um, you the file is. So you can just quickly say uh, footsteps on grass, and that way you don't have to rename the file. Which if you go to rename it. You can see it's this sort of like telephone based system so you have to it takes a while to rename stuff um, so it's nice just to record that quick voice memo um, the, there's actually a way to edit stuff in here as well you can cut and trim and stuff uh, i found it's not really user friendly so i haven't delved into that very much um, since i've gotten it uh, which was a couple days ago um, record setup you can pick how many channels you want one two four or six is various combinations um, so for instance if i choose four 
right now it's picking the uh, X, Y, and Omni as my, you know, two stereo pairs, which equal four. Um, I can change that to, you know, I can do all these various internal and analog. So internal is a combination of the four as a one stereo signal. Um, the X, Y, which is directional, plus the plug-in mic, which is on the side. So you get the idea. There's basically a lot of options, um, the various combinations of the mics. I'm going to go back to two channels. Uh, you can choose a sample rate, the, um, the type of file you want to export it as, etc., etc. Play setup. Um, it's really just for how you listen to it. It's not, not very uh, useful. Um, input. Now this is the, uh, if you want to have like limiters, um, low cutoff uh, filters and things like that, which is actually really helpful. Same for those two. Um, system setup is just things like contrast, uh, touchscreen configuration, things like that. Uh, audio IF, it means this actually is an audio interface. You can plug this in via USB to your computer and the um, and then you can plug in uh, guitars uh, through the you know TRS plugs at the bottom or you know use it as a microphone and actually record into your computer uh, you know, like you can record into any of your DAWs using this unit. So it's really actually a good unit for taking with you uh, in a portable setup. So if you have a laptop, you can just take a laptop and this, and you can, you know, do all your recording with just that. Um, and then maybe a mini keyboard would be handy too. But, uh, and then SD card, just formatting the SD card, um, the size, the date and time, uh, just setting the date and time for the unit and then factory reset, just go, uh, resets the unit to the factory defaults, of course. Um, so that's about it for the, the menus. Obviously, I was really quick through it, but um, it's a pretty pretty user-friendly unit um, other than the editing screen. Uh, I, didn't, I haven't opened the manual yet, so um, I've, I think I've used everything but the editing um, without looking at the manual once. So really straightforward, really cool unit. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I haven't used the audio interface, but um, I don't expect that to be complicated. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying that out. So anyway, I, I suggest it. I'm going to try it out to some other competitors' products next week. But um, that was the Roland R26. Mm -hmm.